Okay guys, quick note before the video begins, because this video is about a medical related issue, I am turning approved comments on because we don't need any armchair doctors in the comments giving people terrible, terrible advice. So just so you know, I do welcome comments and I do welcome questions, just let's make sure they're scientifically accurate, okay? Sounds good. Now let's get to the video. Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to Musings of a Fox. If this is your first time here because you're searching WPW, hi, my name is Gabrielle, welcome to my channel. This is a weird place for you to be probably if you're not also into beauty and fashion and body positivity, but I cover all kinds of things. But if you like what you see, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and um, you can wait till you find out the mystery if you want to give it a like. So, the big question that I then used as the title card that I've been asked for the last two weeks, what's that thing on your chest? This beautiful thing on my chest is a heart monitor. And why am I wearing a heart monitor? I am wearing a heart monitor because I was born with a heart mutation called Wolf Parkinson White. Syndrome. <laughs> what is Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome? Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome is where your heart has not one electrical path, but two, or in some terrible cases, more than two. But the majority of people with WPW have an accessory electrical path called the Bundle of Kent, and yeah, that's that's not normal. Your heart's supposed to have one electrical path that is well controlled and keeps your heartbeat regular and beating, you know, a normal beat. 60 to 100 beats a minute when you're resting, 120 plus something if you're exercising. My bundle of kit can make it so that when I am resting and sitting comfortably, my heartbeat can skyrocket to 163 for seemingly no reason at all. And there really is no reason except for the fact that I have an extra pathway. In terms of the mechanics of WPW, I have a video that I have linked down below that explains exactly how everything happens, um, how WPW is formed in utero, what it truly does to your body, how you can have atrial fibrillation, tachycardia, arrhythmia, all kinds of great, wonderful side effects of this condition. So I'm gonna have the medical experts explain it to you guys because I'm just not well versed. So what I want to talk about in this video is what it's like to live with WPW, why I'm wearing the heart monitor currently, and how it affects my body positivity. I really hadn't contemplated the body positivity aspect when I sat down to record this video when I first got the heart monitor. But after having this for two weeks, I've had a range of experiences that have had me have to check myself and also check some other people. While I have linked to a scientific video about Wolf Parkinson White, I do want to give you some specifics about how WPW affects me. As I said, it is something you're born with. Um, it is possible, unfortunately, once you are born with it, you can have procedures called catheter ablations that can get rid of it, but there is a high likelihood with WPW that the pathway can grow back or you can grow a new one in a completely different place. It's not quite understood why it would grow back when it's a mutation that develops, like as your heart develops when you're a fetus. So that's a little strange. It's just kind of like you're meant to have this mutation in a strange way. So that's not fully understood. Um, but as far as I know, I have one pathway. I cannot tell you if it is in the upper or lower chambers of my heart. I do not know that specifically. I do know that it is on the back of my heart in a very difficult place. So when I was a teenager, before I went off to college, we tried a catheter ablation and unfortunately it was unsuccessful. So I have had it, I've tried it, I've done the three weeks of bed rest where you can't lift anything over five pounds. It's awful, but if it's successful, it's well worth it. If it's not successful, it is devastating and heartbreaking and at this point I'm not ready to undergo another one unless the results of this heart monitor say that is the best course of action. So for my specific case of WPW, it was discovered when I was two weeks old at my two week checkup. Um, it was complete happenstance. I'm very fortunate. If it hadn't been caught, if it had been a different day, there is a high likelihood that I would not be here talking to you at this moment. It is extremely dangerous for infants and toddlers because your pathway is super slick and used all the time and you, experience lots of arrhythmic, tachycardic, and atrial fibrillation episodes. Mine just happened to be caught 
by the doctors. My heart rate was 280 beats per minute. So they whisked this newborn child away from my parents and did um, kind of that, that diver's reflex. They put ice over my little tiny baby face to kind of shock my body into a regular rhythm. <laughs> um, so that's exciting. So I was on a medication for WPW throughout my childhood up until about like kindergarten age. I don't really remember being on the medication so that tells you I must have been very young. Once I was like a young child and into my adolescence it was not something that was treated with medications. It was just something I was aware of and I avoided my triggers. My personal triggers, they are different for everyone, my personal triggers are stress. So when I get super stressed out, um, physically or emotionally, I can have an episode. So in my life, I've had them because I was in high school taking four APs and in a big musical. And so one day I sitting at home alone and I completely passed out. It is not like falling asleep. It is a sudden very sharp sudden loss of consciousness because if you're having um, atrial fibrillation your heart beats so fast it pumps all the blood out of it and then there's no blood left to pump to make all your systems function. Luckily that kind of a shock is enough to get your body working again so three hours later I woke up. I've also had episodes because I took too hot of a shower in college that happened and I passed out in the shower. Luckily I did not hit my head, but that is a danger. So as a young kid, I was warned against sports that gave me unnecessary like heart issues. I did play softball as a kid, and but I had to be very careful during warm-ups. I can't do any of those exercises like that interval training where you drive up your heart rate really fast and then you slow it down and you drive it up. Like my, my heart can't do that. That's just gonna make my pathway go, hey, I know how to make your heart go like super fast, super efficient, right? No, no. So there are things I have to avoid. Can't take hot showers, have to be really careful and monitored in a hot tub. I cannot use saunas. Um, I have no restrictions on amusement park rides, which is very thankful because I am a roller coaster junkie and I love them. Um, and those are not stressful for me. I get really excited and really happy. So those are totally cool. If it's like a negative stress or, you know, exhaustive, um, those are the kinds of things I have to avoid. So it's always been a thing in my head of like, okay, can I do this? Is this safe? Is this going to be an issue? So for most of my life, it has been really well controlled. Except like I said, in high school, when I was stressed out with all my responsibilities, um, I had it sometimes in college, stress one, I took that too hot a shower. Um, I get it around finals and midterms. And so there was a medication, a beta blocker I would take in those instances. Some people take it like a stage right medicine. So you can take it before your midterm and your finals and kind of calm down, not so much mentally, which is great, but physically, you don't physically get that like anxiety and that stress. So that's really nice when, you're, when your heart doesn't want to cooperate with, you know, really important deadlines. So why am I wearing this now? Well, if you're new to this channel, I'm sorry that you're, you've come to the, like the sad portion of the video. If you've been here a while, we all know something terrible happened in 2018. It was the loss of our cat in a really horrible, quite literally PTSD causing fashion. The moment the doctor came in and gave us the news, I actually had a panic attack and thus an episode right there in the emergency room. So that was great because I had to kind of counterbalance the fact that my body was trying to kill me and the universe had killed someone I love at the same time. So it was really great. Um, so I've had a lot of episodes since then because I have been in depression and grief and anxiety. And here I am with this channel trying to encourage you guys to love yourselves, to take care of yourselves, and to be your own best friend. And I wasn't doing that for myself. I mean, I went to therapy and that was good, but the therapy wasn't helping my heart. So I decided to be a responsible person and get it checked out. Um, and that, oh my goodness, did I run into like issues just try? I mean, that's the American healthcare system for you. There's an epidemic in this country where you are a fat person who goes to the doctor and the doctor doesn't want to listen to you except to tell you that you're fat. Luckily, my personal GP is not like that, but when you go for tests and other things, you're gonna run into people who might be like that. So I called my doctor and said, hey, I'm having some episodes, and you know, an EKG sounds good. And he's like, yeah, an EKG sounds great. 
So I go from AKG. The technician asks me what I'm there for, and I go, I have WPW. I just want, you know, to get checked out. And she's like, what makes you think you have WPW? I don't know, lady, the fact that I was diagnosed with it as a friggin' infant, like, WPW is extremely rare. I think there's maybe 20,000 cases a year, which is rare, but not like the ultimate, you know, last golden sheep rare. But this woman just, she thought I had probably WebMD'd my heart's beating fast and I had just self-diagnosed. It is rare to get to your 30s without ever experiencing WPW. Doesn't mean you don't have it, because as you see, if you check out that science video, you can find out that you can have an extra path and never have it activated, which is super awesome and congrats if that's you, not me. But it is impossible to get to 30 and to suddenly get episodes. You should have probably, like you probably never had them checked before, but you probably had them. It's really rare for it suddenly to activate in your 30s but I know I have this and she's just super indignant. And then the whole time that I'm like trying to get this heart thing checked out, she's complaining to me that I'm 29 and I don't have children. What? Like I'm here for my heart and you're mad at me that I'm a married woman at 29 without kids. Okay, sure, whatever. Obvious, maybe I kind of on an off day, but it's just kind of like, is this the most important thing to be discussing when I'm telling you that my heart is not cooperating and working like a normal heart? But, oh right, she doesn't think I have that because, you know, I'm just making up this crazy rare condition. Awesome. Cool. Um, so then she sends off her results and for some reason my doctor loses his mind and agrees with her that I don't have WBW. Your EKG is fine. You don't have it. Hey doc, that's that's not possible. Um, WPW is thankfully a kind of, a, this may not be the right word, but like a degenerative thing. As you get older, you should have fewer and fewer episodes than you would if you were a kid. But it's still there. Your pathway never goes away. It might weaken, but it's still physically there. It is a physical piece of your body. It doesn't go away. But he was like, yeah, it's, it's gone. You're fine. And I'm like, Okay, and he's like, I was like, that's not possible. So tell me again how how I don't have it. And he's like, oh, well, you had that ablation when you were a teenager. Yeah, doc, that wasn't successful. It should say that in the notes. So thankfully, I challenged him enough that he's like, fine, go see a cardiologist. And I'm like, okay, we'll see a cardiologist. That's what I wanted the whole time. And so I get a cardiologist and she is amazing. She is probably about my age. She is a badass. I adore her. She listened to everything I said and she's like, yeah, you obviously have WPW. And that's when she told me that as much as I feel like my doctor is an idiot, He's actually just way out of his league. WPW is so rare that even your general cardiologist would not necessarily know how to understand the notes about my ablation and how it didn't work and why it didn't work. Um, most, a regular cardiologist won't really understand WPW. So I have a cardiologist who specializes in electrical issues with the heart. So she is amazing, but she said if you have WPW, especially if you're older, it may not show up on a 5 lead EKG or a 12 lead. 5 lead is like, if you've ever seen them like put like lots of sticky things on a chest, or 12 lead is when they put them on your arms and legs as well. It just may not show up if you're not having an episode. Um, typically it would show up because there's a thing called a delta wave. Again, it's explained in the scientific video, but it means that when your heart goes in that big big mountain in an EKG when, you know, when a heart rate goes boop, boop, yeah, that big one when you have WPW is wobbly. Weirdly enough, neither she nor I understand it, but the Apple Watch has an EKG function, and my Apple Watch EKGs show my Delta Wave. Um, it actually, like, so dumbfounded her that she was, like, having me send her the data from my Apple Watch, which is a really awesome, cool function of the Apple Watch EKG. She decided that the heart monitor is the best thing to figure out because it records um, EKGs constantly. And when I'm feeling like I'm having an episode or I feel a weird symptom I'm not used to, I press it, this giant thing is a button, and that will highlight 45 seconds of the EKG so that people who down at the processing thing um, are storing through all my data can like take out those moments that I've said this is when things are going wrong and they can analyze what my EKG says in those moments. I have caught 
um, episodes on my Apple Watch, but because an Apple Watch EKG is not really prepared for WBW, again, being so rare, it showed um, the like EKG you get when you're in like aortic failure. Um, if I was in aortic failure, I would not be here talking to you, so obviously it's wrong. But again, it doesn't know how to handle um, your entire heart beating like one giant thing instead of having it ba-dump ba -dump. It doesn't know what to do, so it turns your EKG upside down, which is quite terrifying. <laughs> so yeah, so that is WBW. That is why I'm wearing this heart monitor. Um, I just want to let those who have WPW, who either are experiencing new symptoms, who didn't know they had it, or just trying to figure out what it's like, your life can be completely normal and completely fine. Um, if there are medications you can take, I would recommend at least trying them. I don't like the beta blockers. Um, they make me feel like locked away in my own head because I feel really excited in my head but then physically it doesn't let you kind of physically stress out. You can't get that rapid heartbeat, that excited heartbeat and so I feel really trapped so I don't take it. Um, but episodes are completely manageable without medication. There are methods you learn for shocking your body back into a normal rhythm. You also have up to, as an adult, 24 hours to get to a hospital if you're having a truly ongoing episode. My episodes last under five minutes. Um, so yeah, because I know how to stop them. But it's a completely live withable thing. <laughs> It's like it, um, it really has never impacted my life. I've played sports, I've done theater, I've traveled, I go on roller coasters. So it doesn't, it's, it's a completely live with life. Sometimes your chest feels like garbage and so that's not great. So it's definitely something you want to talk to your cardiologist about and figure out which treatment method is best for you. If they say a catheter ablation, I do recommend at least giving it a go if it can get rid of your problem for at least like 10, 15 years minimum, go for it. Um, for those of us it doesn't work for, it's not necessarily an experience I want to do again. Again, it includes three weeks of absolute bed rest because your heart gets swollen to about three times its normal size. So it is a very precarious situation after the procedure. Um, so I'm not really ready to sign up for that again, but if you haven't done it the first time, um, I would heavily consider that if your doctor is, is encouraging you. So how has this whole heart monitor experience affected my body positivity. Well, this is a pretty visible thing on your chest. So it's been really out and at the forefront. And most people, I'd say 80% of people, didn't want to ask. <laughs> they either didn't notice or they just didn't want to say anything, which is totally fine. You don't have to say anything. I chose because I also, you know, I have my day job and I have my internet job to be really vocal about it because I think I can help people. Um, I also know that I freaked a lot of people out by posting a photo of like something stuck on my chest and it was really sweet that you guys are concerned for me. Currently I am fine. <laughs> Unless something else, they've discovered something else is going on with me. I'm fine. This is all manageable. I'm just making sure I'm doing the best I can for myself. So that's why I have it. But it is interesting those people who decide to like run with something medical on a fat person's body and just use it to ask the most extreme questions. If you're living in a fat body, we all know that people think that we are just riddled with every disease known to man. Um, and are there people who have diseases because of their weight? Sure, absolutely. Are there skinny people who have diseases that other people associate with fat people? Absolutely. But the amount of men who saw this thing on my heart and then decided to ask me about my blood glucose monitor or asking me if I finally got a blood glucose monitor or all these things of pretty much saying, you're fat, you must have diabetes. Not like, hey, so I th see a thing I just, what is that? No, that, or they go like my friend did, hey, what's that? thing on your chest is it a blood glucose monitor it's like what the f guys like one most insulin pumpy things are down there where your pancreas is because that's the problem with diabetes or I guess there's a new one that goes like on the back of the arm I don't have diabetes and I certainly would not put a blood glucose monitor on my heart like really it was amazing it was amazing that like everyone's questions 
and on, it was 100% men. The only thing I got from women was, are you okay? Is this, is this serious? Is This is okay, right? You're okay? Are you okay? Which is great. All the men, get fat. You gotta, you, you got the diabetes. That's the diabetes, right? Diabetes, diabetes. And so to my friend, he was like, C can I ask you what that thing on your chest is? And instead of letting me give an answer, it was, that's a blood glucose monitor, right? And I'm like, no, no. And I was like, and I just flat said, is it because I'm fat? I'm fat, so I have a medical thing, so it must be diabetes. Like, that's just immediately where you go. So it's because I'm fat. And he was just like stunned. He didn't know what, he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm just like, it's on my heart. Like, my pancreas is down there, so why, why would I have a blood glucose thing on my field? Well, I don't know. I'm like, if you don't know, you don't need to offer your opinion or guess crazily at what is on my body. It was just, I was floored and I was pissed. And it's just like, and so when I wanted to explain what it actually is, that it's a heart monitor, he was completely disinterested. He just wanted some affirmation of some secret theory he'd had about me for who knows how long. And it was just, yeah. And then one guy who asked me what this is, was fatter than me. And I'm kind of like, do you not know what a blood glucose monitor is? How do I? Like, why are you, are you dumb? Like, are you really dumb? Because you should not be asking another person about their medical condition in an accusatory fashion. Um, it, it's just, it's amazing. It is already hard for people who are fat to go to the doctor and to be proactive about their health because we're so convinced that we're gonna get garbage information. And I have gotten garbage information, but because I have been insistent, because I know my body, because I'm in it 24 seven, I am now at the right office talking to someone about the right thing and it feels amazing. So I just wanna say to those of you who feel like something is wrong with your body that's very specific and has nothing to do with your weight, I just really want to encourage you to brave it, to try and get through the stupidity and the ignorance, to get help for what you need and you will find the right person. You unfortunately have to be your best advocate and that is insane and ridiculous and I'm sorry. Um, this is actually, you know what will make you feel really good? I'm gonna put the Samantha B video um, that was written by two fat women about the medical industry and how much they are killing and hurting those who are plus size with their stupidity. So watch that, it is so powerful and so wonderful to see. And, but if you have something in your body that does doesn't feel right and I know you're scared please just power through get to them talk to them because I would rather have you here and have been annoyed and have a story about how someone was a jerk to you than have something go wrong and lose you because you were scared of people's ignorance so that is my lesson. I am wearing a heart monitor because I was born with a mutant heart. I refuse to be treated like my situation is anything other than what I know it is. And so I am getting help and being proactive for my body. I encourage you to do the same. And let's let's change the world. Let's get people to stop thinking they know anything about fat bodies. And let's teach them to get their own houses in order. All right, guys. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I'm sure it's gonna read something crazy on the monitor, but that is it for me. I'm getting off my soapbox. Um, I will see you next time for something a little more fun, a little more lighthearted, a little more laughing, a little more pretty. If you have any questions for me about WPW, about how to talk to your doctor while being fat, ask him, put your questions down below in the comments. I will be answering them. Um, just like I said, turn monitoring on because I don't need anything like last video where someone decided to tell me I should rename my channel Musings of a Cow. So clever, so funny. But I'm here for you guys. Um, this is a troll-free zone. I'm going to keep it that way. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.